All right, let's get started. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Nate Hosner. I'm a senior product management uh, manager here at Salesforce. I'm joined by Imba Ganapathy. He's a senior uh, software engineer here at Salesforce. We're really happy to be here and talk to the group about Lightning App Builder design best practices. As usual, please don't make any Salesforce purchasing decisions based on future looking statements. And we do have a couple in the presentation today, um, some features that are coming out in uh, future releases of Salesforce. So we're gonna jump right in and talk about Lightning App Builder at a high level. And then we're gonna dive in and talk about some design best practices, both for low code use cases and pro code use cases. So the Lightning App Builder is Salesforce's premier low-code declarative builder tool that admins and developers can use to create world-class experiences for their users. And this uh, is supported in all the core applications like sales and service and even custom applications. And you use the Lightning App Builder to build your record home, your home pages, and your app pages in Salesforce. And it's, um, it supports native Salesforce security. Uh, we ship a number of out-of-the-box components. So when you use those, you not only get the security, but you get responsive design. So you have support for tablet, um, mobile, and desktop. Uh, and you also get UI consistency across your apps and across the pages that you create uh, using the Lightning App Builder. So let's look at a couple of these design surfaces that you can create with the Lightning App Builder and notice a couple of design best practices. So the first one uh, is the app page. So this um, example is the High Velocity Sales custom app. Um, and there's a similar one. This is a home page for the sales app. And in both cases, the design here uh, is doing something that we would recommend, which is leveraging um, graphics to um, consolidate and present visual information to your users. We all get uh, caught up in data showing really thick layers of data. Best practice is to show your users visual graphics and allow them to digest that information and drill in and get the data when they need the data, rather than overwhelm them um, with, uh, with um, grid-style data. So here's a look at a fantastic record home. This kind of gives you an idea of the art of the possible with Lightning App Builder. So this is a, um, an account record home in the sales app, but you can see that it spans the entire customer 360 with sales, service, marketing, and even integration capabilities. All of this has been composed using the Lightning App Builder. So let me do a quick tour with a much simpler um, use case and show some capabilities of Lightning App Builder, including a few new things. So we're taking a look here at an account record home. Um, and this is very uh, laid out very simply. But we're going to take this into the Lightning App Builder and take a look at the capabilities. The Lightning App Builder is divided into three parts. Right on the left-hand side, you have your out-of-the-box components. And below those are custom components. So there is a pro code capability for the Lightning App Builder that we'll get into later in this presentation. Once you drag the components onto the canvas, the properties panel on the right-hand side is showing you the available customizations for each of the components. And you can drag and drop on the surface to rearrange your components. And like I said, this um, natively supports responsive design for phone and for tablet. And we have preview capability right here in the Lightning App Builder. So you can check this responsiveness by toggling the form factor in the menu there at the top of the screen. So we'll go back to desktop mode here. Um, the other thing I wanted to highlight, just a native cap capability here, um, are the templates. So this is set up to uh, be a header with a right-hand sidebar. But we have a number of pre-configured templates that help with uh, ease of use and laying out your various um, components. Now, there are a number of upgrades available in the Lightning App Builder that you might be noticing release over release. Take advantage of these. This is how we release new capabilities in the Lightning App Builder out to our customers. So the one you're seeing right now is the ability to add actions to the Highlights panel. Um, and one uh, that's coming up right now, this is what we're demoing at our booth this week. This is a new feature for summer 2022. This is the ability to upgrade to dynamic related lists. This gives you as an administrator the ability to filter um, your related list, something our customers have been asking for for a long time. We're really excited to be sharing this for the first time at TDX uh, this year. 
Um, so you can see all the page layout editor capabilities are now surfaced and the Lightning App Builder makes it a really easy experience for our administrators to do these configurations rather than toggling back and forth to page layout editor. Uh, the last thing I think to show here um, is, our, um, is our page analysis, right? So this is a performance profile. We're predicting the performance of your record home uh, based on information and data that we're gathered, gathering from across our customer base. So there's a tremendous amount of intelligence behind this, and it gives you as an administrator some insight into how your page is going to perform, and you can make changes uh, based on that before you uh, roll out your uh, design. So just to recap on a couple of best practices here, look for those upgrades. The one that, um, that I really want to highlight is dynamic related lists. Again, new feature for summer 2022. Use visuals where possible, right? Use the um, filtering capability and dynamic related list to show your users the data that they need contextually and use graphics to summarize it and make it easier for them to digest and engage with rather than um, piling on so much data way up front. And then leverage that page analysis tool that I showed. That's a great predictor of performance. Nothing ruins a good design like poor performance. So pay attention uh, to that as you're designing. So again, Lightning App Builder, it is a low-code tool, but it supports pro-code use cases. Developers can create pro-code uh, custom components, surface them in the Lightning App Builder for administrators to use uh, in their page layouts. And that's what we're going to get into now. So we're going to talk about a real-world situation here with Northern Trail Outfitters. Um, this is an outdoor retail brand, and they, of course, use Salesforce for all of their sales and service operations. But the sales uh, users have a complaint, and we're going to try to deal with this. So they're putting together road trips. They want to see where their accounts are located on a map without drilling in and out of every single record. So Imba here is our staff developer, and we're going to bring him in to talk about best practices for custom components. Absolutely, Nate. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, so here we have a flexi page uh, that Northern Trail Outfitters are uh, giving to their customers. And let's go ahead and take a look under the hood to see how this page has been designed and how we can improve this. So we get into the app builder, and immediately we are able to see there are no custom components available to help us solve our problems. So let's go ahead and create the custom component that we need to fix the issue. Here you can see the record list component. It's a simple LWC component. Uh, the CSS, HTML, and JS has already been implemented. For the purpose of this feature, let's go ahead and update the JS meta XML file. Uh, the first thing we would like to do is expose this component to app pages that are uh, uh, on the app builder. And so we'll be adding the target lightning underscore underscore app page. This will expose the component to app builder. And further, we'll also add a description as well as a master label so that Nate here can easily understand what exactly this component does when he adds, it, adds this to his page. And another important uh, thing to note is like adding icons to your components. Uh, this helps your admins to easily identify your component and distinguish it like from the long list of components available in the custom list. Uh, so let's go ahead and create an uh, icon file for this uh, component. Uh, with the SVG extension, and go ahead and add all the uh, content required to render this image on the palette. Now that that's done, let's go ahead and save this file, push the changes to our org, and see how this component renders on the app builder. And if you're not already using SFX CLI, uh, we highly, highly recommend you do so. Uh, it helps managing and making changes on the platform very much simple. So now we are back to the app builder. When I refresh the palette, I should be able to see the custom component. And there you go, the record list component is now available. Let's go ahead and drag and drop the component onto the canvas. And now you're able to see a list of all the accounts that are available in the org being rendered on the component. This is all fine, uh, but this component, as you can see on the property editor, is not configurable at all. So let's go ahead and customize this component a little bit more. So back to the editor we go. And in the design file for the record list component, uh, we will now be adding target configs for the lightning underscore underscore app page 
uh, target, uh, which is basically the app pages. And we will be introducing two new properties, namely the API name and the list view API name. So let's save these changes and head back to the builder to see how this is changing the component. So now, back in the builder, let's refresh the canvas. And now when I select the component and the property editor renders, you'll be able to see two new parameters that can help you configure this component. For the purpose of solving Nate's problem, we will uh, be setting the API name as account and the list view API name as all accounts as we wish to see all the accounts that are available in the org. But in the future, if Nate ever wishes to configure the component to show a list of contacts, then you can easily do so by just uh, setting the API name and the uh, list view API name to contacts. So now that that's done, let's go ahead and save the page and head over to the Lightning page to see how this page renders. So there you go. You have uh, a related list component, which is uh, showing a list of all the accounts on the org with minimum information required without having to drill into the comp each account individually. Back to you, Nate. Awesome. Thanks, Imba. Um, why don't you hit on um, the best practices that you um, uncovered during that demo? Uh, definitely. Uh, similar to programming on any platform, uh, we do have some best practices for customers who develop custom components for the Salesforce platform as well. Uh, the first one is to use unique icons to distinguish components as we touched upon before. Uh, it helps uh, the admins to easily identify your component, especially if they have a long list of custom components available in their org. Next slide. Uh, second one is always, always use 100% width and never use positions when designing your component. Uh, this ensures that like your component doesn't overflow or shrink when it is added to the template. And uh, not following this will result in a broken UI experience both for the developers, uh, the admins, as well as the end users. And we would uh, wish to avoid that. The final uh, best practice uh, that we uncovered as part of this was to always use lightning cards or SLDS card. Uh, we can never predict what's the background image or org theming that is being applied in the end user's org. And by setting these values, you're ensuring that you transfer the responsibility to the platform, and we will ensure that your uh, content is visible and clear. Great. So we're halfway there to fixing this uh, complaint from our sales team. Imba has created a custom component and surfaced it in the Lightning App Builder so that I, as an administrator, could leverage that component in my um, record pages and app pages going forward. But the second piece is going to involve implementing dynamic interactions. We want that custom record list to interact with a map component and show our users where their accounts are. So let's um, have you take us through that, Imba. Absolutely, Nate. So uh, similar to the record list component, uh, we'll, be, we'll need to create a new maps component to solve the problem. So let's head back to the editor. And in the editor, you're able to see that this map, we have a new map component. And this is just like a simple wrapper component around the base component called Lightning Maps. And in the JS file for this component, we will be introducing a new add API attribute, which will be named record ID, which is us basically telling the component that uh, it needs to take the record ID as an input. And we'll head over to the JS meta XML file to expose this component to the app pages and app builder, uh, similarly like how we did for the record list component. So we will be specifying the target as lightning underscore underscore app page. And as part of the target configs, we will be specifying the record ID as a configurable parameter uh, for this component. And the final step in making it uh, available for dynamic interactions is to make sure that the record ID is being passed from the record list component when the event payload uh, is being sent out. So to do that, let's go to the record list uh, design file, uh, which, is, which is a JS meta XML file. And now, within the target configs, right below the property tag, we are going to be introducing the event tag. And we are going to be naming this event as item selected. 
and as part of the schema, we will be specifying that this event will be deploying to, will be sending out uh, two properties, namely the record ID as well as the object API name. Even though for the purpose of this demo, the record ID is sufficient. And we can also specify type and title for both these properties. Now that we have done all the configuration, let's go ahead and save this and see how we can put to use all these cool new features that we have implemented. In the JS file, of course, like we have some eventing to th throw the uh, uh, item selected event. You can see that the name item selected matches with what we see in the design file. So let's save this and head back to the builder. Now, now back in the builder, let's uh, refresh the canvas as well as the palette. Uh, since we have introduced a new component as well as made changes to the existing component, and we can see the account location component show up now. Let's drag and drop it onto the canvas. And while that loads, let's take a look at our related list component to see how it has changed with the record list component to see how it's changed with the changes we made. Now you can see on the property editor, there's a new tab called interactions. And let's go ahead and create a new interaction. To solve our problem, we need to target the account location component. And so we'll be specifying that as our target. And we'll be passing in the record ID that it needs as an input by specifying uh, with the expression open curly braces exclamation mark event dot rec ID. And once we have done that, let's save this and head back to the lightning experience to see how all, all of this ties in together. Now, as you can see, as I click through the different uh, items on the record list, uh, the corresponding location gets updated on the map uh, for each uh, location that's mentioned on the account. And thus, with like a few simple clicks, we were able to establish communication between uh, two custom components. Back awesome. In. Thanks, Imba. So you can see once Imba has set up um, the custom component, then I as an administrator can leverage um, the properties panel to build those interactions uh, between the components. And I think that plays into the best practice that you showed here. Definitely, Nate. Uh, so why, the best practice uh, final one for today is kind of break your complex components into smaller components and uh, use dynamic interactions to communicate with them. Uh, you no longer need to build bloated and large components with complex logic and communication built inside them. You can break them up into smaller reusable components, which are easy for the admins to understand, as well as for them to solve multiple use cases with the same components. Cool. So problem solved. And again, that feature was dynamic interactions. That's available now. It came out in the winter 2022 um, release. So just a couple notes before we uh, end up here. Feel free to uh, check us out on Trailhead. We have a couple of re relevant modules. Also, please visit us at our Lightning App Builder booth in Platform Park. We're demoing uh, dynamic related lists and dynamic actions. We'd love to, uh, to talk to you about that. And again, here's a quick teaser on dynamic related lists. Very excited to be delivering this uh, to your sandboxes here um, shortly. And lastly, uh, please visit Camp Design where you can meet designers, gain skills in less than 10 minutes, and share your Trailblazer story. Thanks, everybody, for coming. If you have questions, Imba and I will be here at the stage. Thanks, everyone.